hi. Thanks for talking to me. I appreciate it. I'm really hi. enjoying the, the series. Um, so to start off, both of your characters aren't necessarily ones who you would expect to be friends, but they're getting closer and kind of helping each other out. So can you sort of talk about that friendship and sort of what I guess they mean to each other, what they're learning from each other, that kind of thing. We'll just go Rohan and then Josh. I think a lot of the characters in the Baya can really dismiss Scott at times. And even though Lucas and Scott do butt heads quite openly and on the surface, they still have time for each other. Josh, uh, Lucas still makes space for Scott. And um, that that time and understanding is, is really powerful and important. I think that that means a lot to Scott to be taken um, and, and received in that kind of way, not to be instantly dismissed and just cast aside. That kind of continues a bit more when we learn about more of these characters and more of, more of their past. Uh -huh. uh, Scott, with the traumas that he's had as a kid and what happened with his family and how that's really pushed him into self-medicating. Uh, there's a lot of understanding and, and trust that develops with these two characters that I think is really, really strong. And, and a good, good shift from, from the play where they originally began and, and meet. Um, the growth that we, we see with these two is, uh, is one of my favorite relationships in, 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 in the show, for sure. I'd ship them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Josh. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with, with everything Ro Rohan said, you know, he put, he put it so well. I think they started off with, um, I think most of the characters in season one started off, and this is what you do when you're, you know, lumped in with a group of people you've only just met. You start looking for the tropes, the archetypes mm -hmm. of these people, and, and you kind of don't look much further than that because it's easier for you in a survival sense to just like, know, okay, that person's the hothead, that person's this, that person's that. And I think Lucas was the outsider from the get go, you know, and, and made it pretty clear that he was the outsider and he had a lot of anger. So I think Scott saw him as, as somewhat of like a, a bully with the way that he behaved. And, and, you know, he was very blunt, you know, he's kind of like a blunt force. And I think Lu Lucas, you know, kind of saw Scott as, you know, maybe weaker than what Scott actually is. And uh, the nice thing was that Scott kind of persisted with that relationship in season one, you know, was kind of put, pushed, pushed at, at Lucas, you know, and they, they obviously had their big conflicts with the, the heroine in season one and, you know, the death threats and all that kind of stuff. But um, as time goes on and they, they realize they're actually part of a community, they have to rely on one another. And in season two, you know, they definitely learn to rely on one another. Um, you know, they, uh, me and Scott have this joke that, uh, uh, sorry, Rohan have a joke that, you know, at certain times, one of us is Batman, one of us is Robin, and one of, you know, that always changes, and we're always arguing over who's Batman, but um, it's true, you know, like, I'm his sidekick on some missions, and, and you know, begrudgingly, he's my sidekick on, on some missions, and I think that's why it works so well. <laughs> yeah, right, um, well, Rohan, your character obviously has gone through a lot in these newer episodes because of Aldridge and everything that happened. But now that he no longer has to keep that secret, is he going to be able to sort of, I guess, open up more to people because he's not having to kind of keep it all in? Great question. You know, Aldridge really takes Scott on a journey and promises him uh, answers. And that's a really, really important thing for Scott, that um, the understanding and knowledge is such a, a thing that he's hungry for. So when Aldridge does eventually die and, and Scott's kind of left hanging because that wasn't resolved at all, he, he still doesn't understand his place in the whole thing, which Aldridge has really emphasized quite a bit like you're here for a reason and it has to be you and uh, you know you're pretty integral to, to getting your friends back from 1988 he's really he's really left in in, in a way abandoned because you know he's had to lie to his friends and, and do all of these things that he wouldn't normally do be distrustful for the greater good and um and there was no payoff for that so scott's in a place where he's a bit more frustrated because of that, because it's like taking a step back. He was so close to getting answers and and um, and and information that yeah. he's just like, wow. Then now what? Now what? And um, along with uh, 
what happens in episode five with the with his vape stick uh, that really sends it in, a, in a, a new direction as well of identity and um, and how he manages manages those those changes. All right. Now, Josh, I, I want to talk about your character changes too. Obviously, he goes to kill that man and decides not to, um, partially because he has a family. I think maybe partially because of Ver what Veronica says to him too. Um, mm. Is that, do you think, a turning point for him? I mean, is he going to be more open to, you know, being nice? <laughs> I wanted to, you know, be nice, to be more <laughs> more friendly to people. I guess is this going to be a turning point for him? Yeah, become more approachable. Yes, know? there. That's that's a better description <laughs> than what I said. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think that that the inability to do that definitely forces him to reflect, you know, which is not something he's had to do this whole time. You know, he is, with the death of his mother, you know, and spending time by her graveside, um, you know, burying your mom, like that's yeah. freaking huge, man. So for the first like few episodes, he's just in a daze, you know, like as I imagine anyone would be. And he's just reacting. He sees Veronica react. You know, he, he sees the guards react, fight. You know, they steal the food, react, steal the food back. You know, it's very reactive. And he sees the guy who killed his mom, react. And then he confronted with the consequences of, of that action, which is this child. And that forces him to reflect on his life. Where he sees this family, you know, this family unit, maybe not dissimilar to like something he's seen as a kid, you know, like the dad putting him to bed, the mother in the room as well. You know, back when maybe his parents you know, his, his home life was less volatile. Um, so that is a, a absolutely a turning point. And what we see as a result of that turning point is quite complex and, and unique and, and unfolds over that, the remaining, you know, uh, nine to 10 episodes. And it's really interesting to see the characters that start helping them on that journey and the decisions he makes as a result. So absolutely. All right. Is there anything the two of you are allowed to say about what's coming? I know you obviously can't specifically spoil anything, but is there anything that you're allowed to kind of tease about what we can look forward to the rest of the season for your characters? <laughs> you're both staring at me. I guess that's a no. Roja, <laughs> lots of like some really some some really fascinating creatures for sure. We get to see more creatures, more really. Yeah, things that I didn't expect, you know, like very unexpected, um, uh, yeah, 10,000 BC creatures, which is super exciting when you, you know, when you read that and have to Google it and you're like, man, how are they going to do this, you know? Yeah, look it up. Um, and a lot of character growth, uh, you know, some, some interesting relationships forming, some really like satisfying relationships forming, you know? Yeah. Is there anything you can add, Rowan? Or it's okay if you can't. I just figured I'd ask. You know, good on I can add yes. Scott gets into a couple of fights, physical fights. Yeah. Oh, okay. The, <laughs> which uh, were really fun to shoot and and read. Um, Scott's becoming a bit more physical in in this season, and um, that's just really exciting to see that growth from season one and and how um, more comfortable in his body he's becoming. Yeah. Well, you you guys, yeah, that's okay. You guys get to do obviously a lot of work with with green screen effects and things like that because of well, you're not there. Um, <laughs> is that something that's been difficult for the two of you? Is that something you enjoy? How has kind of that experience been on this show? We, we we've actually been quite lucky. Like um, we film, I'd say eighty percent of the stuff on location. So you know what you see in the clearing with the you know, uh, the Peterson and all the upturned cars, that's all real. Like we're there, we're in the middle of, we drive like, we get up at like four or 5 a.m. and we drive for an hour and a half to get to set, you know, like it's, we're in the middle of nowhere. So it definitely lends to that, that vibe, which is one of the pros of shooting in Australia, you know, where we, where we are. Um, and when it comes to the green screen stuff, a lot of that is, is this thing called dream screen, which is, this like kind of big semicircle of giant screens which project images oh. so you can actually see what you're interacting with. I mean, the, the, I will say the, <laughs> the animals. Um, so in the, <laughs> in the scene where, where Izzy is patting the little baby Willy Rhino, one of the cutest animals we've had so far, 
the woolly rhino is actually our um our fearless director and executive producer adam davidson who's just on all fours and she's she's patting his head and um you know some of the wolves is like is this guy in a tight blue suit so that's always fun you have to kind of get the laughs out of the way first before the you know you can actually let the fear set in that you're supposed to be experiencing so that's unique but in terms of backdrops yeah we've, we've been really lucky with um yeah having access to the dream screen and just the location itself. What about you, Rohan? You kind of feel the same? I, in the same, in the same boat, yeah, the <laughs> stuff that we shoot, a lot of the dream screen stuff is used for the Lazarus building, what happens in the tower. And uh, that looks really lovely, really beautiful. I can't wait to kind of go in the studio and play around in that environment. But the stuff that we get to do on location with the um, special effects and reacting to things that aren't necessarily there or a person in a blue morph suit pretending to be a giant uh, ground slot, it's fun. It's exciting. It's, um, it's play. That's what we get to do. We get to just allow our imaginations to run wild, nowhere near as wild as the, as the folks that write the show because uh, <laughs> the stuff that they come up with is absolutely insane. But it's it's fun to be able to let loose and play with uh, imagination in that way. I love it. It looks like it would be. So for each of you, what has your character taught your, you about yourself? Ooh, I like yeah, that question. Yeah. My character has taught me that everyone has value. Everyone has something to contribute. And even if we don't pick it up on someone in, on their first glance, um, people have a story, people have uh, an identity and we all have something to, to contribute. Yeah. Yeah, that's hard to follow up, isn't it? Like, <laughs> I fluked it hard. It's like, yeah, like a presidential uh, speech or something. Um, my, my character's and working on the show with this character has taught me a lot of like patience um you know lucas is such a hothead and has such like a, a temper and he's so reactive that what he's going through is, is an exercise in patience and for me this this show and, and acting in general is like it's all about patience right patience right. and preparation and so that's it's definitely something that i've taken away from this is, is have patience for your character let, let you know let let lucas figure it out you know, you don't have to figure it out as much. So just, you know, patience and presence. All right. All right. Well, thank you both of you. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm enjoying the season. And now I'm looking forward to seeing the inside of the building too. Now that you're talking about it. Yeah. I love it, Jamie. Yeah, it's so cool. Yeah, yeah I love it. Look forward to it. All right. Well, thank you, both of you. Have a good day.